Good evening. Welcome to St. Peter Lutheran Church. This is our Lenten service, the sixth Wednesday in Lent, the final Wednesday night service. Um, our next services coming up will be uh, April 4th is our men's breakfast time that we normally would meet at the church, and I'll be here in prayer and have resources at the church for anyone who needs to or would desire to pick up resources. You can stop by the church at any time. Uh, the church is still a sanctuary for prayer. If you happen to be driving by, if it's a nice day like we had today, um, stop in the cemetery if you want, pray, sit, relax, enjoy God's nature, enjoy God's peace at the altar. Um, but the, the church is still a sanctuary for prayer. Uh, we're just not allowed to come together as a group right now. So keep that in mind and take advantage of the resources I have laid out in the basement if you wish. Those are yours to take, keep, share with others. Um, but I want to equip as many of you as possible in as many ways as possible in this time when I can't teach uh, directly to you and interact and hear where the needs might be. So I put out anything and everything and hopefully it addresses many questions and equips you for conversations. Um, and then this, we're heading into Holy Week. So next Sunday, this coming Sunday, April 5th, is Palm Sunday, which will not be like anything we're used to. Uh, I don't know what it's going to look like yet. As day by day, things evolve and, and trying to figure that out. So if you have suggestions on that or run across something on the internet, please share uh, for some insight on that. But at the end of the day, we're still limited to just recording and without people gathering and, and worshiping together, things are just not the same, nor will they be. We need to accept that and look for how we can use God's gifts now and use our ministry and to people, whether it's through video or calling our neighbors or checking in on them in whatever way possible. We need to keep doing that. We need to stay connected. This is not a way to stay connected. It's one-way conversation. And um, it also doesn't uh, allow us to, to really feel life with one another. So you have to reach out to your neighbors. That's a burden we all need to bear now. And reach out to whoever God lays on your heart, whoever he's brought you into contact with. Um, Good Friday next, uh, next week, at the end of the week, Friday the 10th, and then Easter Sunday, uh, April the 12th. The, the one thing I want to encourage you to do is uh, the, the service that we're going through tonight is in the notes of this video, so you can click on that and see the, the text that we're reading and following along with. Um, also, the announcements are listed there, and, um, but I encourage you to uh, subscribe to the channel for St. Peter if you desire to be notified when we uh, post a video or whenever there, there's something new that we add. I've been uh, sharing some um, uh, messages separately to inform and share information, and I'll be probably doing some to teach as well soon, uh, and then also whenever we do some type of a service recording. And I hope that we'll be able to offer some worship music of our own in some way, shape, or form, although not part of our service recording for copyright purposes in case it gets taken down. Um, but I hope to be able to provide, uh, that somehow we'll be able to provide some music so you can worship uh, with our same style or same people who would normally play here. And so we'll see what that looks like. Pray for that opportunity. In the meanwhile, I've been including links to Reawaken uh, Hymns, which is a, a guy, a, a ministry that he's offering for free at this time for churches to be able to use hymn music, although by guitar, which is a little different than the organ we're used to. But I encourage you to take advantage of that, as well as any other music opportunities you find online. Um, just uh, feel free to check with me if you want to make sure there's a particular music source that um, we would say is faithful and true to God's word and not just to try to make you feel good or to give you an experience, but actually has good, solid biblical content like the hymns that we have in our hymnal. And uh, otherwise, um, please, please contact me with any prayer requests that need to be known and shared so we can get those shared among the people. Please contact me with any ideas or suggestions or needs that you have so that we can get those shared amongst the church and fill those needs. So um, with that, uh, we are going to continue and with beginning our service with our call to worship. And our call to worship this evening comes from Psalm 141. And uh, my readers here with me tonight and Travis, who will be sharing a message, will be reading responsively with me. We begin with verse 1, Psalm 141. O oh Lord, I call upon you, hasten to me. Give ear to my voice when I call to you. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O oh Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not let my heart incline to any evil, to busy myself with wicked deeds in company with men who work 
and let, let me not eat of their diseases. Let a righteous man strike me, it is a kindness. Let him rebuke me, it is oil for my head. Let my head not refuse it, yet my prayer is continually against their evil deeds. When their judges are thrown over the cliff, then they shall hear my words, for they are pleasant. As when one plows and breaks up the earth, so shall our bones be scattered at the mouth of Sheol. But my eyes are towards you, O God, my Lord. In you I seek refuge. Leave me not defenseless. Keep me from the trap that they have laid for me and from the snares of evildoers. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I pass by safely. We continue in prayer. Father, we come before you tonight, and whoever is watching this later, Lord, we come before you in your presence that you might open our hearts and our minds to the wisdom of your word, that you might speak to us tonight and, and whenever this is being watched, Lord, that your word is living and active and why it is the main focus of everything we're doing here tonight is because you alone have the power to fix and transform our minds and to turn them toward you. You alone have the power to heal our hearts and take care of our needs and our brokenness. You alone, Lord, have the power to equip us for every good deed that you desire for us to do. And so I ask you that you do that for us through this service time, Lord. I ask that you do that for us through your word. May you bless the words that we share tonight. May you bless the time of confession and grace tonight. And may you bless the message that Travis brings to us. And may all these things be lifted up before you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with our confession of sins, and I invite you to confess this along with us. And this confession comes from the book of 1 John in the Bible toward the very back, uh, beginning with chapter 1, verse 5 through 10. We read together. This, this is, is the, the message, message we have heard, heard from, from him, him and, and proclaim, proclaim to you that God, that God is, is light. light. And, and in, in him, him is no, is no darkness, darkness at all. If we, if we say, say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the, the truth. But if, but we, if walk we walk in the light as he is in the light, in the light we, have we have fellowship with one, one another. And the, and the blood, blood of Jesus, his, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we, we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we, if we confess, confess our sins, he is, he is faithful, faithful and just to forgive, to forgive us our sins and, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his, and his word, word is not, is not in, in us. us. This is our confession of sin, re recognizing before the Lord that we cannot do anything on our own, that he had to save us, and that we cannot save ourselves and our sinfulness it, is a stain upon us that we need removed. And then we have, again, my favorite part all the time that I get to proclaim that we have God's grace, though. And we get to declare that to ourselves through God's word. Whether you're worshiping at home, this declaration applies to you, not because of anything I say or do or anything you do. It's because God's word says this to us. And the declaration tonight comes from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. And I encourage you to read along uh, with me wherever you are but it's for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing it is the gift of God not a result of works so that no one may boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them know that full well that God loves you enough to die for you and give you this gift of grace and not just for nothing, though, but that we might also now do his work and be his hands and feet. So I encourage you in that with what he has done for you, share that with others so that they might have that same freedom of their hearts and in their minds and be free of guilt and shame because of that declaration from God himself. We continue with our readings. The first reading comes from Job 2, 1 through 13. And again was a day when the Son of God came to present himself before the Lord, and Satan also came along to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? Satan answered the Lord, 
from going to and fro the earth, and from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil? He still holds fast his integrity, although you incite me against him to destroy him without reason. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, all that a man has he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand and touch his bones and his flesh, and he will curse to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with the loathsome sores from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And he took a piece of broken pottery with which to scrape himself while he sat in the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do not hold fast your integrity, curse God, and die. But he said to her, You speak as one of the foolish women would speak. Shall we receive good from God, and shall we not receive evil? In, this, in, in all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Today's second reading is from Numbers 11, verses 1 through 15. The people complain. And the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. Then the people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. So the name of that place was Tibera, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. Now the rap rabble that was among them had a strong craving and the people of Israel also wept again and said oh that we had meat to eat we remember the fish we ate in Egypt that cost nothing the cucumbers the melons the leeks the onions and the garlic but now our strength is dried up and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at now the manna was like coriander seed and its appearance like that of bedlam the people went about it and gathered it, ground it in hand mills, or beat it in mortars, and boiled it in pots, and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was like the taste of cakes baked with oil. When the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell with it. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their clans, everyone at the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord blazed hotly, and Moses was displeased. Moses said to the Lord, Why have you dealt ill with your servant? And why have I not found favor in your sight, that you laid the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth, that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom, as a nurse carries a nursing child, to the land that you swore to give their fathers? Where am I to get meat to give all these people? For they weep before me and say, give us meat that we may eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone. The burden is too heavy for me. If you will treat me like this, kill me at once. If I find favor in your sight, that I may not see my wretchedness. The gospel tonight comes from John 6, uh, 25 through 59. If you are able, please rise. <clears throat> When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, for the food that endures to eternal life, which is the Son of Man, will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must, we, what must we do to be doing the work of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What works do you perform? The fathers ate manna in the wilderness, as it was written. He gave them bread to eat from heaven. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven 
and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I say to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. All who the Father gives to me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do the work, not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled amongst them about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he say, I come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not grumble amongst yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except him, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your father ate manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks of my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks of my blood abides in me, and I in him. As living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So whoever feeds on me, he will also live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he was taught in, at Capernaum. Here ends our reading. You may be seated. What a year. <laughs> uh, it's, it's been an honor this year to be part of this round robin again. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's hard not seeing people in the pews, but I know that we are reaching to you through the camera. And I want to give Pastor Barry and Kevin and Morse and Rod I want to thank them for letting me be a part of this. It's, it's an honor to be with such a great group of guys and men learning and, and, and digging into God's word. When uh, Barry called us in, to get this meeting around on what we're going to do this Lenten schedule, everybody kind of had their own ideas. And the one that stuck out was the wilderness. And that, that really kind of stuck out touched my heart it, it's kind of stuck with me this year and what a year it's been so that's why my message tonight the the name of it is manna in our own wilderness and I want to read to you here from 
verse 33 from John 6, 33. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but your Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Now, as we're reading this here, this part of the Gospel of John, Jesus just got done performing a miracle in front of his disciples. He just got done feeding the 5,000, probably one of the most talked about miracle in in history. And yet the disciples have enough courage to ask him, when they left on a boat by themselves, they get to the other side of the, the uh, sea, and there's Jesus. And yet they still don't believe that he's the son of God. After he just got done feeding 5,000 men. Now, this wasn't men, women, and children. This was 5,000 men. And they're still confused. So, as we read here in verse 33... Jesus is in us all, and we are eating his blood, we are eating his body as bread. And as we go through our Lenten season here, we're coming to the end of it. The manna in our wilderness. What is the manna in our wilderness? And as I go through this Lenten reading, I, I'm hearing Moses' complaint in, in, in numbers here about the Israelites. How Moses is being the middleman between the Israelites. The people that he has just led out of Egypt, out of slavery, into a, going to a free country, and now they are complaining because they are wandering around in their desert. And I had to, I, I have to have some compassion for Moses. I understand where he's coming from after this last year. This last year has not been easy. There has been so many things that have happened to us this last year. Now, when I wrote this, this was all, I had my message prepared before this virus, coronavirus, got out. But yet it still sticks true. And what a year it's been. Last year, we got a new pastor here. We were so blessed to have him. And then the flooding started. The problems, the cold, the dreary days. The decisions that had to be made for numerous people. Roads. uh, Trying to remain calm. And not only trying to remain calm, but trying to remain calm in the Lord. There was stress in our wilderness this year. This year trying the roads. The roads are so trying. The rough, slick, ruddy, muddy. As a farmer... uh, just trying to get to my cattle for daily chores without making a mess was was virtually impossible, let alone trying to get them fed. We had had wives and children, family members that were were trying to make it to town. There were were vehicles left at the intersections at night and four-wheelers and bikes left there during the day because the roads were impassable, but that's where they could commute just to get home. We had school buses that would only travel on on good roads. Uh, We had cars that were were chucked full of mud. We had culverts that were being washed out. We had a wilderness where we were wandering around. We're out of our normal. There may be some that I don't know about that had health issues. People that are living in their own wilderness, wandering around with their health problem. We had some that had marital problems. We had people that were stressed out. They had stress issues. We had some with financial issues. We are walking around in our wilderness lost. Now in Numbers here, as ladies have read, we hear how the Israelites were complaining 
about their lives. They were looking at how bad things were. They were looking at the hot desert, the snakes, the temperatures, wandering around in circles for years. And yet, God was still taking care of them. God was feeding them. God was giving them food to eat. He was keeping them alive day to day. And yet, they were still complaining about the food, about the manna that God was blessing them with. He didn't leave them out in their own world. He didn't let them just wander around for 40 years. He took care of them. Yeah, I can kind of understand eating manna. I, I'm not a big fan of leftovers. I, I have a hard time eating something two or three times a day in a row. So I can understand where the Israelites were getting a little irritated. You know, but it was actually getting to where it was, they wanted to go back into slavery. They wanted to go back to Egypt where there was meat, where there was better food. And yet, they were willing to turn their backs on the God that just brought them out of slavery with numerous miracles there. But they hear the complaining about from God. And Moses, even Moses, this is where I'm coming from. Moses now, he's even getting stressed out. The complaining of the people. They're, it's getting to Moses, the, the strongest man, the, the guy that's the closest to God. Even he is asking him, God, if you find any favor in me, kill me. Let me die right now. This is too much for me to bear. But God doesn't. God still keeps him and uses him. Now let's look at the manna in our wilderness. What manna has God given you in your life? Are we complaining about the things that God has given us as a gift from above? Are we are we taking the gift that God has given us and using it as a curse on us? Now, I'm going to go into a few things here that I see. And I just want to let you know that I am so privileged to be able to do this. I always hear things in our church or around, just not, I hear it around. I better go do it because nobody else is. How many times have you heard that from somebody at work, at home, your friends? Sad to say, but even in our own churches. I look around and I see people doing things that others don't, and I take it for granted. Now, I take things for granted. Every Sunday we come here, there is a bulletin that's printed. And I'm going to use Joanne. She is awesome at this. Every year, every, sorry, not every year, she does this. Every Sunday, every service, I take for granted that when I come to church, there's a bulletin that I didn't have to prepare. But she took time out of her day to do it. Snow removal. That's another thing. Uh, we're in a rural church here. I take it for granted that when I pull in the parking lot, the snow is removed. I, I give our janitors, Ben, Jeremy, Chad, I give them so much credit for doing the things that God has blessed them with, being able to use a scoop. Another thing I take for granted is that when we have our services, the candles, the candles are lit. They have oils in them. I thank Connie so much for the, the manna that God has given her to take care of this, of the candles, the taping. Now, more than ever, I have to thank Ben for taking the taping. Not only is he doing a massive service, he is doing a great service for all of us to get it out to those that can't be here. Not only that, but the ringing of our bell. Every time we say the Lord's Prayer, I take for granted that that bell is being rung. I take that for granted. 
but that's a manna that God has given somebody that they can do to help with the worship of God. I take for granted, too, when we come here, the church for teaching the little kids. I know that there's somebody going to be here every Sunday to teach our youth. And I, I can speak for a lot of us that we all take that for granted. There's so many other things that we take for granted in our daily lives, like the cleaning of the church, the mowing, the decorating, the flowers. Every Sunday, every service, there's flowers. The, wash, the painting of the walls. There's so many things that are being done in our community that people, that is a, a gift that God has given you. God has given you the gift to be able to service, to discipleship towards other people. There are people that I know that are, they strictly make it a habit to send either you a birthday card or a get well card. They make that their priority. I can't do that. I, I don't have that ability. But somebody does. But I know that that is a manna from God. That is just not, that's more than a blessing. That's a gift from God. There are people now that are talking through windows to the people that are, can't get out. That is a manna sent to you from God. The one thing that, that stuck out to me when I first started writing about this is, is Al and Wayne Remy. There was not, never a door handle that did not work in this place. Those two always just took it upon themselves to fix. And they did that in the community. I am so blessed to be in a community and to be in a service that God has given so many people in our lives the ability to do things that we take for granted. Are we taking them as manna from God? Are we looking at it as, are we in a wilderness that this is all that we get to do? Or are we looking at, at that this is something that I can do? This is something that I'm able to do to help somebody else. So as I look at this Lenten year, I know during Lenten season, it's tradition that you give up something for Lent. But let's make sure that it's not the manna, the gift that God has given us that to be a great disciple, to be a great gift to somebody else. Make sure that we don't give up our manna that God has given us. Because there are people out there for the glory of God. There are people out there that are feeding off of each and every one of you. Whether you think it or not, those cards that are being sent out, people live off of that. Those people that are being visited, they're living off of that. A phone call from somebody, they're living off of that. Not only that, but are we bringing it? Are we using this manna and are we establishing it as a gift from God? Are we acknowledging it to other people? We all have sin. We all know that we are. We're all sinners. This Lenten season, when I had my benefit to, to name my, sir, my message here, manna in our own wilderness. What is a blessing? What is a capability that you have had? What is a blessing that God has given you? Not only has he sent us this Lenten season, his son. He sent us his son to die on the cross for all of us, for our sins. He sent us each other to live off of, to live for whether it may be our spouses, whether it may be a friend, maybe it's a co-worker, maybe it's somebody in your class. Somebody needs you somewhere. And you may never know it, but the words that you choose and the actions that you do will affect them tremendously. And that's what Jesus is staying here as he is telling his disciples in John, 
He says, I am here to feed the world. If you believe in me, if you live in me, I will live in you. And I will work through you. I will work, you will work for me, but you will have such great gifts. And here, I will feed you your daily bread. And he has given us that. He has given us that Bible to live off of God's daily bread. It saddens my heart that we can't be together this Lenten season. But there are so many things that we can do. I don't, don't complain about what manna God has given you. You are a gift from God. Your services, your actions, your words. They, we need to show it. We need to live it. And we need to be thankful of it. Because not only that, we are also a disciple for Christ. We are living our days for him. As I close here, I hope that when you, when you watch this, that you think about what manna God has given you in your wilderness. What storms, what wildernesses have you gone through in your life that makes you a better person for Christ? What storms have you weathered with him and he has brought you out of it bigger, better, and stronger? So I hope that you never complain about what manna God has given you in your wilderness, but you take it and you treat it as a gift, as a daily gift from God that you get to go out and show it and be thankful to others for what Christ has given you. Because after all, he is the one that sent his son to die on the cross for us, for our sins. We need to show that to other people. Amen. We continue our service with our confession of faith and the words of the Apostles' Creed. Wherever you happen to be watching this, I invite you to recite this out loud together as we do so together here. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, and, earth, and in, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was, was crucified, crucified, dead, and buried. He, he descended, descended into hell. hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our prayers for the church. Father, as Travis has expressed so well this evening in his message, Lord, the, the manna, the things that we live on, really, are our service to you. The ability to be your hands and your feet, to be ushering, to be uh, helping with music, to be helping by reading, to be helping by cleaning the church or clearing snow or coming up soon mowing or whatever. All the different things from small to big that we do for one another in the church, often without recognition. Those are all ways that we find fulfillment in doing the good deeds and good works that you've called us to do, that you've directed us to do. Lord, in this time of separation and isolation, the opportunities to do those things uh, aren't as clear. Or maybe there, there's more things that are bar barriers between us and doing your will. And it's not as simple as coming to church and seeing a need and filling it. So, Lord, I ask that you bring to whoever's watching this now and us here, bring to mind and to our hearts a passion and a desire to, to do something, to do something creative for you that touches people's lives, that makes a gospel difference in their lives. 
I pray that the name of Jesus Christ is on our lips more every day than the word COVID or Corona. I pray that Jesus Christ is, is shining through our words and our actions on a daily basis, but that we actually are touching and reaching people with that message and not just trying to live a good life. I pray and appreciate in this time that life and death is foremost in our front of our faces and that we cannot deny that we will all die. And, and I pray and hope that, our, that we are not affected by this virus as far as that taking our lives. But the reality is each and every one of us will die. And we need to know and, and, and make sure that we know what happens after that moment. Where are we going to be? Are we going to be forever apart from you in hell? Or are we going to be forever in your arms and in paradise with you, enjoying your love and your life and, and the beauty and the joy and peace that you provide? I pray and hope that that is what people have and that knowledge and that assurance. And the only place to get that assurance is in your word and in your testimony of what Jesus Christ did for us. In this Lenten season, as we come into Holy Week, Lord, this is the whole point of our, of our faith in what you did in the walk you walked, in the talk that you talked, and the power behind that walk and those words. And Lord, as we use your words and the services we record, because your words are the thing that have power, not ours, as we use them, may they be living and active, whether through video or in person, as people open their word. I, I pray that people remove whatever barriers are in their lives to them reading your word daily, to praying and being in relationship with you, Lord. Lord, connect everybody with one another in a ways that only you know how, whether through email or text or through windows or whatever creative ways we come up with, Lord. Your people need to be connected. We cannot break bread together, literally, as your word commands us to do, Lord, and that is hard. And we can't change that right now. And so we ask that you equip us and guide us and in what we can do and not lament over what we no longer can do as far as being together physically, perhaps, in church. Easter this year, Psalm, Palm Sunday, these things will not be the same as we know them traditionally. And the same thing was true of the Israelites when their temple was sacked and their people were taken into captivity over and over again because of their sinfulness as a nation. We find ourselves in that same state. You've removed your blessing. Our sins are bearing the consequences of them making sports an idol or, or sex or gambling or whatever other idols we have, money, power, greed, our country is having to face the, the consequences of all that, Lord. And we ask that you continue to provide and bless your people. And I ask that you equip your people to witness to those who are not your people, that they might be spared from the worst of your wrath and your, your consequences of removing blessing. And Lord, ultimately, I pray that the message of your salvation goes out to all, that you use us, use your word to share that message. It is the only hope we have, whether we survive this period of time or not, whether you return tomorrow or a hundred years from now. The reality is life and death, eternal life and eternal death. And may that be the thing that we bring up in every conversation. May we have the boldness to do so because that's the only thing that matters. Our spiritual health must be first and foremost secured. That is the manna we need, your word and your prayers and your service. And after that, then our, our mental and emotional health, without those things, then we have nothing else and our physical health deteriorates. And then our physical health, Lord, protect and guide that as well. But let that not drive away us taking care of the other two as we lose all of them if we do not have that spiritual health. So I pray that this evening in the name of your son, Jesus Christ that you bless us in that. Amen. We continue in a prayer as you taught us. It's Matthew chapter 6 in your Bibles. I invite you to read that or recite with us as we pray our Lord's Prayer together. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive, forgive us our, our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Our benediction is listed in this, the service notes that are attached to this video. It comes straight out of the Bible, and it's the most common one that we often use in our churches. And so I invite you, as fathers, as heads of households, or whoever, wherever you are watching this, to open up to chapter 6 in the book of Numbers at the beginning of your Bible, verses 24 through 26. And because we are all priests, the priesthood of all believers, as the Bible tells us in the New Testament, we can pray this blessing in our, amongst our families. And yeah, I suppose I could bless you through a video, but I mean, who's going to watch that and when? Ultimately, you need to do this in your households. Read your Bible out loud to your families. Read this blessing to them now. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Only his word can do that for you. Only relationship with him can give you that peace. And he does that through this time now, but through his word. That's where the power is. Take that to heart tonight. And also, I, I invite you to don't let the service end here for your family. Pray and worship together with whomever you happen to be gathered with and wherever you are. And if you're all by yourself, I find somebody. Pray over the phone with somebody. Sing songs of praise and worship with God over the phone with somebody. If you're a grandparent, do it with your grandchildren. What a blessing. What a teaching moment. Do it with your children. Remind them that you are their parents and that you want to lead them spiritually. Now is the time when our pastors cannot do that anymore, not directly and not to large groups, and we can't contact everybody, and we don't have enough of us to, to minister directly to everybody, so now it falls on you. Whomever you are, wherever you are, you can be that to somebody. God calls us to be that for our neighbor, for our family, for those whom we love, and so I invite you to share that love with with whomever you come in contact with. Offer to pray with them. Offer to sing a song of praise with them, even if the only one you know is he's got the whole world in his hands. What a joy. I love using that in church because it brings the kids and the older people together because they all know it and they enjoy it. And there's so many other songs that way. Seek them out. YouTube has a wealth of that information. Other sources have a wealth of that information. There is no excuse. Seek it out. and May God give you the opportunity to do that. And may he bless you through this video and other sources that you, you watch and consume in this time of, of uniqueness, I guess you could say. God bless you tonight. Amen.